Hey guys, today we are going to talk about meiosis. Now, we've already talked about mitosis, which we know is cellular division, and it takes place in four steps. Our good old friend PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Well, meiosis is very similar to mitosis with one big difference. Mitosis is all of the cells in your body except your germ cells. Meiosis is cellular division of your germ cells, so sperm and males and eggs and females. So meiosis is going to be cellular division of your germ cells. So let's go ahead and start looking through here. My meiosis does two things, two important things. One, it takes a cell with two copies of every chromosome, so the diploid cells, and makes a cell with a single copy of every chromosome, so a haploid. So one diploid cell makes copies, and these copies are haploid cells. This is a good idea if you're going to combine two cells to make a new organism, um, because the two haploid cells from each organism have to combine to make a diploid cell. Um, this is accomplished by having the chromosome numbers. So you take a diploid cell, which is two sets of chromosomes, and you cut them in half. And those two haploid cells come together to make a new diploid cell. So anyway, in meiosis, one diploid cell produces four haploid cells. So every diploid is going to come up with four haploids. Keep that in mind. So uh, why is that important? Why do we need meiosis? Well, one important thing is the fact that meiosis is necessary to half the numbers of chromosomes going into the sex cells. You can't combine from two organisms unless you have half as many chromosomes, because then your new cell would have way too many chromosomes. Why do we need to half the chromosomes in our sex cells? Well, that's important because at fertilization, the male and the female sex cells each provide half of the chromosomes that goes into the new offspring. That way the offspring gets genes from both parents, not majority from dad or majority from mom. It gets an equal amount from mom and dad. And that's important. Another thing about meiosis is the fact that it scrambles the specific forms of each gene that each sex cell receives. Um, this makes for a lot of genetic diversity. That way you're not getting majority of your chromosomes from dad or majority of your chromosomes from mom. It's actually recombining from both of your parents to make a brand new organism, which would be you in this case. Um, this is accomplished through what we call independent assortment and crossing over. And we're gonna look into those things here shortly. Also, genetic diversity is important for the evolution of populations and species. Um, if DNA was not recombined and all these genes were not recombined into a new organism, different traits would not be passed along. If everything was always an identical copy of their parent, just like they are in the organisms that reproduce asexually, well, that's all you're getting. You're getting an exact copy of what you already have. But with sexual reproduction, where each parent contributes half of your chromosomes, this is going to recombine all those genes into making a brand new organism. And that brand new organism has diverse genetics. Its genes are very different from the parents that it came from. And that's good because typically you're going to inherit the dominant, strong, good genes. And that's what we want to happen. Okay, so in meiosis, it's broken down into a few parts to kind of get it going. First, you have your parent cell right here at the top, which is a pair of chromosomes. Now, each of those chromosomes, you can see here in the second little picture, each chromosome is copied. So now, instead of these single strands here, you have these double strands here where your chromosomes have been copied. And there is one, um, not only one stage of division, but there are two stages of division during meiosis. And you'll see that as we go along here. But the first division 
is where the different homologous pairs split apart. And you can kind of see that in these two pictures. One homologous pair goes one way and another homologous pair goes the other way. They split apart. Then you have a second division in meiosis where the sister chromatids split apart. So not only, not only do the chromosomes, the homologous pair of chromosomes just split apart, then the chromatids within the chromosomes split apart. And at the end, you have four gamete cells or four sex cells with half of the number of original chromosomes. So you go from a pair of chromosomes, the chromosomes are copied, the homologous pairs split apart, then the sister chromatids split apart. And you, we went from one parent cell to four gamete cells. That's what happens in meiosis. Now we're gonna break each of those steps down and learn a few more details than that. So let's go ahead and continue. Also, we call meiosis reduction division, which hopefully that makes sense. You're reducing how much of the chromosomes are in the cell. So hopefully that connection makes sense to you. Okay, meiosis has several stages, meiosis one and meiosis two. So we're gonna go through PMAT twice, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase one, and then prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase two. Um, just like mitosis, interphase is gonna be first. Each of the chromosomes replicate during interphase, and the result is gonna be two genetically identical sister chromatids, which remain attached at the centromeres. So, so far, that's the same. Then we have prophase one. During prophase one, chromosomes condense and the nuclear envelopes breaks down. Hopefully that sounds familiar. Um, during this phase, each sister chromatid will match up with the homologous pair. Now that, that's gonna be very important. Um, and it's also extremely important because during this phase, crossing over happens. Now crossing over is where little segments of DNA are going to exchange. If you look at this chart here, um, we have the two chromosomes, the paternal chromosome, the maternal chromosome, and you can kind of see little, little snippets of each chromosome goes to the other set. It just kind of crosses over. We call that crossing over where those segments of chromosomes are exchanged from the paternal chromosome and the maternal chromosome. So one from mom, one from dad, and they start swapping parts. That's kind of the beginning process of the new organism coming to be. Okay. Next, we have metaphase one. And during metaphase one, we have the homologous pairs lining up at the equator. Again, that sounds familiar to mitosis, I hope. Um, the random distribution of the homologous pairs along the equator is called independent assortment. The pairs can line up in either of two equally probable ways. You can kind of see down here that they might line up just like this on the left. There's one possibility where the homologous chromosomes split up this way, or they could also do it in such a way where they're not homologous, they're not exactly identical, and they split up this way. But either way, of, either way is possible. Um, there's no way of really telling what's gonna happen, but both of these are possibilities of what might happen. Next, we have anaphase one. During anaphase one, the spindle guides the movement of the chromosomes towards the poles. So again, just like in mitosis, these chromosomes are lined up and the spindle fibers begin to pull them apart at the centromeres. Um, sister chromatids remain attached and they move as a unit towards the same pole. Now also, the homologous chromosomes are going to move towards the opposite poles. So the similar ones are gonna start moving. All right guys, this video might end soon. I can only record these in 10 minute segments. So this one's about to wrap up, but keep going and click on the next video so that you can keep going in this assignment.